Pat Glass. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I want to speak today about legal aid uh, for social welfare law, not because I'm an expert in social welfare law or in legal aid, so I want to draw on my experiences of many years in education and of my last year as a, a new MP in this place. But before I do, I wanted to make some reference to the debate today. Um, as with many debates, there have been members, I think, who've popped in, ranted a bit and left. But overall, I think I've sat through this afternoon some of the most informed and thoughtful contributions that I've actually ever heard in this House. And I think it's come from both sides and I think it gives um, an understanding of the levels of concern that there are on both sides of this House. I think it's a shame that the Lord Chancellor didn't, wasn't here to hear from the, um, his colleagues, the member for Maidstone and the Weald, and the member for Dewsbury. You listened to it. Well, I'm pleased that you did, because I think they, they were worth hearing. Um, if legal aid is no longer available for social welfare, law, legal aid that currently funds advice centres and in some instances representation from those with problems involved in social welfare law, then this is going to affect large numbers of people. But I particularly want to talk today about parents who have issues around education, disabled people who incorrectly or inappropriately have their access to benefits withdrawn, and those who, through me medical negligence, need access to additional resources and support. I've worked in education for many years. And I have seen many parents who have, um, are, are very angry that their parents have been refused admission to their preferred schools, um, to their preferred schools. But most parents I've come across are quite capable of standing up for themselves and their children in admissions appeals. However, some do need additional help. And I do welcome the government's recent, very recent, moves to take um, access to legal aid to support parents who need advice with preparing SEN tribunals out of these proposals. But nevertheless, in future, if these proposals go through, vulnerable parents or parents who have special educational needs themselves will no longer be able to get the advice that they need in admissions or exclusions. And I think we all generally accept that middle-class, educated, socially mobile parents are best placed to get their children into the schools of their choice and that it is the more vulnerable, poorly educated and socially immobile parents who are less, least successful in the admissions process. In terms of ex exclusions, 70% of pupils who are excluded from school have SEN in some form or other. And many of those have parents who have SEN. These people need advice and representation and they will no longer have that available to them. On Friday last week, I met with my local um, Citizens Advice Bureau in concert, and they told me that they're bracing themselves for the increased numbers of people who will be coming to them as a result of changes in welfare reform. And I, in my constituency office, am making arrangements and preparing ourselves for increased workload as um, people are reassessed for DLA um, employment support and put through new assessments. At my surgery on Saturday, I met an elderly couple who were telling me that their middle-aged daughter had received notification of a forthcoming review. Their daughter has severe learning difficulties and mental health problems, but no physical or visible disability. The mother broke down in tears as she told me that her daughter was eagerly looking forward to this interview because she wanted to tell the people at the interview how well she could look after herself, cook for herself, dress herself appropriately, none of which is true. None of that is true but this is going to have an immediate effect on her access to benefits. I've got no doubt whatsoever that this will be overturned at appeal, but those parents told me that they've had years and years of being burdened down by caring, anxiety, worry about the future, and they simply couldn't face another battle with the benefits agency and the appeals people. In the past, I would have been able to signpost those people to the right kind of legal advice, and I won't be able to do that in future. There will be no, if these proposals go through, there will no longer be access to legal aid for housing matters. And as a new MP, I've been stunned at the amount of casework that I have around housing issues. And none of it is trivial. It's not people who fancy a council house. These are people with real priority needs. Elderly couples who, who, who are now disabled 
or in one case a lady who'd gone blind, disabled young people who need access to appropriate housing, and people who are at risk of losing their homes. Legal aid will no longer be available to these people when their landlord, their housing company or their local authority fail to meet their statutory duties. Legal aid will no longer be available to those to fund help and representations in cases of med medical negligence. And in, in my job, before I came into Parliament, I worked with a number of parents whose children, as a result of medical negligence, suffered profound and multiple learning, physical and sometimes medical needs. Um, those parents using legal aid were able okay. to secure a financial future for their child, were able to adapt their homes and get access to, to levels of therapy that would improve their children's lives. That will no, no longer be available to them. I just want to say very finally that um, I think that the, the most vulnerable in society will be affected by this. I ask the Lord Chancellor to think about these things again. I don't have the slightest hope that he will. Yeah.